social network, when actually it's really more of the verb. It's what we do with it, not what it is. It's more art than science, too. It's not something we can prescribe. It's not something that follows a specific formula. Each situation that we come to to use social media is a little bit different. So we have to think a little bit creatively. That's not to say we don't think logically and we don't develop according to a pattern and do these things, but it's both those sides of the brain that need to be engaged at the same time when we're looking at it. So looking at a brief history of social media, from my perspective, it goes back to the cave paintings. It goes back to the hieroglyphs. And of course, in the more recent history, television. Now, in the US, we had Uncle Milty. Do, we have, do I have any you know, US colleagues here? You remember Uncle Milty? What, what did Milton Merle, right? Maybe you've heard of him over here. Um, what would happen when the first TVs came out is that everyone would go over to their neighbor's house and crowd around the TV, just like they did with radio and radio plays back in the day. That was a form of social media. It was those stories and connections. It was the being social with the media that made it interesting. And of course, now we have our own modern interpretations of it, uh, which are very important to understand. But the point is, all media is or can be social. Right? It, it's our collective storytelling. It's our shared history that's important. But there's something else happening that we all know about, this democratization of the technologies. Um, I don't have my prop for my flip video, but you know, we can do with a flip video on YouTube today what it used to cost millions upon millions and millions of dollars to do. That's an incredibly powerful thing. And if we look back at the origins, we go back to Gutenberg and see what was really happening. At the time, before Gutenberg, you know, all that knowledge of how to write and how to publish and how to do these things was in the hands of the monks. <laughs> was in the hands of the monks, and they actually concentrated power. And by concentrating power, they manipulated people over time. Not always, sometimes, right? And none of this is absolute with that. But it was that distribution of power through the knowledge and the ability to connect and communicate with others that was really a powerful thing within it. And that is actually what's happening, of course, today. And that's what's happening with the Drupal community, and that's a bit of what Dries was talking about yesterday. We'll talk about it a little bit more later on. So this is very good, but it's also challenging, particularly when we got there early. Now, many of you guys have been around for a long time. I've been on the internet since 94 or so. Some of you have been on much longer than I, I realize. And you've been through this as well. Every time there's a new wave, there's a new problem. And the problem is, we have to reteach these guys all the basic stuff that we know. And it really gets annoying over time. It's actually one of the reasons why I think tech support is so challenging for many of us to give our spouses and people we care about, because we already did it, you should understand this, and they don't. So it becomes very frustrating when we're looking at it. But I want to stop and think more critically about what is really happening and what we learned so far, and really share some thoughts to you about how I look at social media from an organizational perspective and also from a societal perspective. Um, but first, we've got to look back. Anyone remember the three C's? Back in the day, in the US, if you went into a VC and you said, we've got common content, commerce, and community, it hand you a million dollars. It was a wonderful thing, it was a short-term thing, but there was a year where pretty much if you said that, you could get um, money. But the framework for a social operating system is a little bit different. I think of it as the forces. It's the context. It's the purpose for which we come together. It's, in this case here, building a Drupal community, building a better platform, learning from one another, and that sets a context for why you're sitting in the room today, and why you're sitting outside the room and talking and collaborating. Of course, then it's the communication that we have with each other, our, our collaboration and the connections we make. Now, when I look at the four C's, I look at it similar to some of the core elements of a database, if you will. It's the get, the put, the commit, the update, the delete. These are kind of the core elements that we can move about in different directions and apply in different situations for our own purposes. And uh, to me, that's very helpful when I'm talking to people about developing a social media strategy. And actually, it's not just about marketing or communications. It's ultimately about changing the nature of the business and how they operate. So there's a challenge here. And, and the challenge is actually that the values that we apply, the attitude that we come to this with, will determine our success or failure. Okay? And, and these are the social media principles that I laid out in a book I was supposed to write that I could never finish, 
because I found that social media was not something that really belonged in a book. It's online, it's ever dynamic, it's ever changing. But being human, it's more than being human, it's actually being yourself, right? Not being a fake person, not being a poser, not doing that. It's being aware, it's being smart. You know, it's being aware of your surroundings when you cross the street, look both ways, same things apply. It's not just being honest though, it's about having integrity. It's a much deeper, deeper issue. Being respectful, being a participant, but not just participating, contributing value, something you all know very much a lot about. Being open, but not just being open, being willing to change. Being willing to change what it is you're doing because you understand that the situation is fluid and dynamic and ever changing. And then not only being courageous, but being willing to fail. Being willing to put forth an idea that the people in front of you may not like. Like Dries did yesterday. And putting it out there and going forward because you know it's the right thing to do. But it's those values that drive it and that attitude. So the question becomes, what do you value? And I want to tell you a little story from my perspective about respect. Um, I started trying to code when I was young, and I realized that I didn't know it was ADD at the time, but for whatever reason, I couldn't pay enough attention to get the syntax right. I was always screwing up on commas and semicolons and put them in the wrong place, and I couldn't do that linear stuff. And it was just very difficult for me, so I didn't become a coder. I instead focused on what I could do with the technology instead of how to make it happen. Ultimately, I changed a little bit later, but I'm not a coder. Now, in the valley, when I'm in Silicon Valley, when I'm out at parties and stuff and I'm hanging out with other folks like you, I don't get any respect. I get nothing. Because I can't build it. Because I can't do it. That doesn't mean I don't have something to contribute. In fact, more recently, I started working on a startup idea with someone I wanted to see if we could work with. So we worked together over the course of several weeks, seeing what our relationship was like. Really smart guy, CTO quality, and I was hoping that I would be more the CEO or not even that high up, just you know one of the one of the team members really. Um, he told me the product was done, so I went in, I looked at it, and we talked, and it wasn't really done. He hadn't figured it out yet. Um, so I came in and I started working on well, what do we really need to do? What are we talking about? How do we talk about this? What do people really need? And then I started designing the user experience and the product itself of what was it that we were giving people when they were going to give us money for it. But two weeks after doing all this and having a great relationship, and by the way, we're still friends and love the guy and we're going to probably still do something together. But literally after all this time of reworking the product with him, after being told it was done, and it wasn't, he asked me, well, my partner and I don't know what value you bring. We don't think there's any, what are you really going to do for us? And I'm like, wait a second, I just rethought the entire product, named it, came up with all these other components, developed the user experience, the end result, rethought how you were thinking, helped you rethink how you were looking at it, and you're wondering what value I bring. It's very simple. I wasn't a coder. I wasn't respected. My contribution wasn't respected. This is a problem. The point is everyone has value to contribute. You gotta think of this more like a baseball team, if you will. Everyone has a role to play. Everyone has something to contribute. But let's move beyond social media. Let's move beyond my own personal emotional hurt. Uh, and let's look at the bigger picture. Because there's something happening right now that's very, very important. Right? Jeff Jarvis calls this the era of the Great Restructuring. Not the Great Depression, not the Great Recession, but the Great Restructuring. The fundamentals of our society and our socioeconomic condition is changing forever as a result of the networked economy. 